It's time for Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over $28 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The Florida Department of Transportation, drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Coke Zero, you don't know zero till you've tried it. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram Trucks, more people are driving Ram Trucks than ever before. Guts, glory, Ram. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Jimbo Fisher. And Coach, uh, congratulations, another win. Sort of a tale of two halves here, but boy, that was an impressive second half as you finish off Louisville 41-21. to It really was. I knew that would be a tough game. I know, I know defensively up front, their front seven was very good. Uh, solid in the secondary. Uh, offensively, I know the quarterback would cause problems with his legs and running around and having to keep him in. They had, they had some explosive receivers. And Bobby's a good coach, and Todd Grantham's a good coach. I knew mm -hmm. they would be ready to play. And you know, this could kind of be a game that would make their season and kind of kick it back off. And I knew they, they had an off week and come in with a couple little things. But our kid was stood to storm. And, you know, but we kind of have self inflicted wounds in that first half. We've got to get cleaned up. But then we played a great second half. What was the biggest difference, first half to second half? It, it, it's, it's crazy. It sounds a lot of attitude. And I don't mean. We had a bad attitude, just relaxing and playing. You know, just, all right, let's do our job. Don't worry about the results. Play one play at a time. Control what you can control. And I know that sounds simple, but that's very easy to get out of whack sometimes. You know what I mean? And you press a little bit, and you want to do well, and you want to keep everything perfect. And just relaxing and playing football. You know, Dalvin Cook obviously has gotten a lot of attention, and, and rightfully so, but Kermit Whitfield has really emerged these last couple of weeks for you. He really has. That whole receiver group, I mean, Kermit's making the plays with his legs. We're getting the ball in different ways, and he's catching it and running it. Made some big third down catches. They're all blocking. Travis and Bobo all had big catches in the game, blocked very well. And then, uh, you know, just doing a nice – and then there's own tight ends. I mean, Maven Sanders had a phenomenal catch on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Izzo blocked his tail off, made a couple big catches in the game. Uh, this We're starting to get the compliment around – and then, and like I said, Kermit, when he can create big plays like that, Dalvin can create him. And then, you know, Everett can create some with his legs and his arm, what he's doing. And then those other guys just keep feeling. They're getting better. And they, they may be the guys next week that make the big ones. So I like where we're going. Bottom line, Florida State wins again. They are 6-0, and 4-0 in the ACC. And we'll get to the first half highlights when we come back right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, you had an emotional win a week prior against Miami, and now you got an early noon start. Your team had to be up ready and focused against a good Louisville team. It really was, and getting them out of bed early, getting going, and we've, now it's the second game we've had like that, and we scrimmaged a lot like that during the year, so we were ready to go. Look at that old guy, old number four right there. He, <laughs> he, he knocked himself down one, but I think that, you know, that just shows you. The guy's the first pick of the draft, and he comes and wears a Dalvin Cook jersey. I mean, you know, just the kind of teammate he was. But, you know, here we started off poorly. Daggum, a bad kick off by Roberto, and they get the ball to 35. And that's where we, we've got to do a better job on that. We were covering kicks when we hit them good. But uh, nice job there, Reggie, uh, Reggie North up on the coverage. But we, I tell you what, we did a nice job. This quarterback ran a couple times, but he did not make the big runs out of the pocket like he had been. We contained, had five sacks on the day, had a lot of pressures, created two turnovers. But, I mean, third and, third and long, we just – we gave up about four of them that we just cannot – other than that, besides those two plays when uh, Trey went out, it would have been a really, really solid day. They hit a Hail Mary in the second, not a Hail Mary, but it's a long pass there in the second half. And there, here's Josh Sweat getting better and better. There's Jacob Pugh got one of his two sacks. Boy, he played really well in the day. This guy got a chance to be a really, really good player. And we get the first play. I like seeing Dalvin stretch it just a little more. We got about six or eight here. And, you know, I was really disappointed the first half with us offensively. We just had too many, just too many silly mistakes. Here they brought a blitz. We're throwing a side to Jessica. I throw that as a back shoulder throw. And, and they got a good play, got us a three and out, and we're pinned back. And we almost, we got a mistake in the punt right there, almost get a punt block. Uh, right there, uh, Demarcus Walker, that's his guy. He's got to make that block. And, uh, you know, just, and, and it, we were ready to play energy-wise. Just, you know, we get to get that mental focus. Here we don't force him out of the pocket. Two guys on the play. There's, uh, there's Derwin kids getting better and better in that secondary. You see him making more plays and more plays. Here they run the option. Really good. Now Lawrence really showed up in the day. You saw him, the cut back there, but he cut that ball back to Marcus Walker making the play, had some more sacks on the day. Uh, nice job on the screen. Great play by Josh Sweat right here, getting out making the play on a third down stop. He got, Boy, he had a really nice day too. Had like 29 production points, I believe. Excellent. 
And then nice job of Everett again doing a nice job. One, two, three, dead in there, tucking the ball, running, making six, eight, nine yards of play, doing a good job. Here we run a little, uh, little kind of like it's a form of a screen. Dalvin getting guys in space right there. Dalvin doing a nice job. He's keep getting six or eight yards. Keep Nick on Diamond, making their front have to chase guys. Good third down pickup. Kermit Whitfield, boy, he's coming that guy and running inside routes, deep, deep slants, doing a really, really nice job. Here we get a nice little naked. Watch this catch by Maven Sanders. You can see we get turned that guy that had a chance on the post. Look at that catch. Even though it was interference, Maven on that catch right there, that guy's got a chance to be a really, really good fight. Now, this here. We had a great play called on the backside. He just dropped the football. Good snap. They're a little anxious to make the play. And this ball here, great job on third and three. But if he gets that ball up, it maybe scores. If he hits him right in stride, it probably scores. And, you know, we just a hair off on our timing and our rhythm early. And, you know, but there's a big play to have to make. Again, getting the first points of the game on the board. Roberto's longest field goal of the year, 43 yards, hits it down the middle and at least getting a good start. Here they're on a little power run, a little uh, power read quarterback option. They see Demarcus Christmas, George O. Newberry setting the edge. And they got some screens here early. Good job for Derek Hoskins. Jalen Ramsey set that boundary edge big time in that game, boy. They were trying to throw into him, and he's too physical to do that with. Now here, after Trey Marshall got hurt, we had a couple mistakes in the secondary in communication, about two verticals in a row right here, and it cost us a touchdown. And it took us – and one, one was – it was two different people on the communication. But when you, you lose that communication, and the guy who's so good in there doing it, you know, it's critical. Now, Charlie got that fixed when they got back off the field. But here we run a nice over route. Found Bobo. A little bit need to get that ball in front just a little bit more by ever. A little bootleg getting it out in the flat. And uh, got, got the ball uh, to a little deep over route. Here we run that. Now, he's got to tuck that ball right there and go. Everett's got to stick that ball inside, get three or four yards, and just go with it. And we'll be positive. We're trying to think big play a little bit too much. And right here, we get a little scramble. Uh, they do a nice job. We, they run a twist inside. And, again, their front four can rush the passer. And, uh, that ball's got to, got to do it. Now, third down, we got a break here. Got a great cut block, but here, on a bubble trying to get 15 back, they get a face mask. You know, they made mistakes too. Now, we get this drive and we're able to continue on with it and keep playing down the field. Here with their little ball out to Kermit in the flat. Great blocking out there by Travis Rudolph again. And Kermit gets his six, eight, nine yards. And those are just like runs. You can just take those and just keep moving the ball. And that also makes that defense have to chase people. Here we go. We got it again. They're blitzing off the edge, trying to take the running game away. We have to be able to have alternative yards outside with our receivers. Again, doing it again, leaving some blocked. All right, we'll come back. I mean, those are five and six yard plays. You're going to keep taking them. If you ran the ball for five or six every play, you'd do it. So uh, nice, nice vertical throw right here. Nice catch by Ryan Izzo on a vertical route inside. Takes a nice shot from the safety. But those, those tight ends now, they just keep getting better and better and better. Here on third down, got to scramble. I'm going to tell you what Ever did here this whole day, this right here. When we had pressure, we had negative plays, he got us out of them by getting rid of the football. Boy, and I'm going to tell you what, this is actually a perfect throw. Kermit's got to anticipate that back shoulder, low hip throw, the way they ran that double post, and the way they were sitting on it. And he ever put that ball right perfect. Kermit can make that catch and just be a little more aware of the surroundings and the, and the coverage. Nice job, Josh Sweat right there with Derek Hoskins getting down inside. There you see Knott and Derek Nottie, Nile inside. Those guys are doing a really nice job. Good batted ball right here, Nile. I'll tell you what, Nile I thought was one of his best games. Physical to line of scrimmage, shedding blockers, being physical with blockers. Again, great job right here. Is that, is that Giorgio? Who is that? No, that's Nile again on the sack. That's, that's Nile right there with Demarcus Walker. When your inside guys start getting sacks, boy, that can be really, really nice. There he is. There's that guy again, Nile. There's about four or five plays in a row. Him and Derek Naughty inside just keep getting better. They're big, strong, physical guys. They're getting better. Reggie Northrup. Those guys like they, they love playing football. Great job here. There's uh, Jacob Pugh again getting back on that sack. Jacob is going to end up being a heck of a football player for it's all over with now. He is doing a good job. Big Giorgio in there batting balls. Like, see, and we were getting ready to check a play. And uh, center just got a little antsy, snapped the ball unprepared. And we, this is what we, the one time we had field position in the whole daggone game, we turned around and gave about four penalties. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just played with no poise early in the game, and that was just very disappointing. Here we had a play. We have a chance for a post route wide open right here, and uh, just got beat. We had a one-on-one -on -one block, and Derek got beat. And, you know, that, that's all you can say about it. Nothing you, anybody could do, and he didn't mean to, but we just got to make the block. We had a post route wide open. But, that, but we knew taking those shots was going to be tough because of uh, – their pressure up front. Man, they, man, look at that. Keeping great leverage on the football. That's what I'm talking about. Leveraging the ball, tackling in space. And Marcus Brutus making a nice play. Here they are. They're bunching the boundary. There's Derek Mitchell who came in, had a real nice game rushing the passer. Great job. There's that guy, number eight again. Now you talk about, you, gotta, you think he's impressive on defense? Go watch him on special teams. The way he does on special teams is amazing. Good job here. Great tackle. Derwin James in space. Getting that guy at that second level and doing those things now. That's, 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 really, that's really nice. That's for sure. They hit it, get a punt. 
again, it seemed like we started back here all day. But, yeah, you got to go take, make the best of it and move the football. Here we got a little stretch play outside number four, and number four gets green grass. Boy, he can stick that foot in the ground. Nice five-yard run. Good five. You're good right there. Good blocking. Run a little cutback, cutback play, and there he is bouncing it. And then what he does so well, he gets you running and sticks that foot in the ground and gets north-south, and you think it's going to be two yards, he ends up about five. Mm -hmm. Then a stretch play. Missed one little cut inside right there. He got about eight. He, could have, he had a chance to squirt up out of there on a double on the second cut, but that was pretty good. Now, they got pressure right here on a third down. But, again, Everett keeping it alive. Guys scrambling, doing a great job now. We're doing a much better job in the scramble rules, getting that ball number four and uh, getting outside and, you know, just pulling up. He, and he's starting to get tired, got a little tight in it. He can feel it. He just backed off. And here we are. We missed a block. Now, we got to stay outside with one. I don't know. They might have got it, but we could have got two or three yards on it. But, again, those run pass options. Now, we missed a side adjust here. See, that we, our, our slot receiver is supposed to break the ball, break a route off, and he didn't do it. And, ever, again, I get just as much out of that as I do making big plays, eliminating and keeping us out of the negative play. All right, they bust it. Don't let somebody else's mistake be your mistake. Throw it away. Then they scrambled, and we couldn't pick up the first down, and, you know, it was very poor there. But uh, great job of covering the kid. Great job by Tyler Hunter. Really good job. He and Jalen Ramsey get him pinned back in the inside. That's a big-time play right there by Tyler Hunter. Now, they pop. We're, we're, in, we're in nickel here. There's only 40 seconds. We, we, know, we don't want to give up too much, but that's not bad the first one. Now we got to start to tighten up a little bit, but just – they're out of you know, timeouts, and they're trying to run the clock out. Now, nice job by Derek Nani right before the half. It's 7-6. to six. You know, and uh, here they are scrambling. Now, this is disappointing. We should have split the zone right here by Marquez. He should have sank a little bit, and they got to go right in the hole and shouldn't have been able to get it. Now they got shot at the end zone. But we get back. Don't let them get the ball off. They're trying to get there. There's Demarcus Walker. That's big because you don't know what. We, you throw a ball up in the end, in the end zone, and that changed momentum. Now the score is 7-6. We haven't helped ourselves very much. They've played a great half of football. It's a one it's a one possession game. We got the ball coming out. We just got to go in, regroup, make our adjustments, and get ready to play a great second half. Easier said than done, though. You talk about regrouping, and you mentioned you were, you weren't particularly pleased with the poise the team showed in the first half. So, what did you do in terms of adjustments to refocus them? You know, it was more mentally. I mean, physically, we, we made our calls with some things, plays we thought were going to be there that were still there in the first half. We brought back the second half and some things we wanted to get ran. We made those adjustments, but you know, making the guys realize just relax and play. They wanted mm -hmm. to, I mean, they wanted to go out and play so well because they played so well against Miami and how they played. And they wanted to go out and show everybody, hey, we can take off and go, and, and they will. And just they pressed a little bit, you know. And then this guy gets it, and this guy gets it, and then it just kind of just, it, it's like the flu. It just goes down the line. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps getting passed along, and you know, it, it just didn't happen. And we got out of rhythm. But that's you know a good sign of, a, of mature kids to be able to go in, especially for young as they were, to go in, get their poise back, and then come out and score five straight drives. We'll look at that in a moment. But the big play of the first half, Coach, uh, well, it wasn't a lot there, but you got the first points of the game, Aguayo with a 43-yard yeah. field goal. And this that consistency, being able to get up 3 nothing, get that first score, stay in the game, hit another field goal in the game, and you know, Roberto being Roberto and being Mr. Steady. Exactly. He's 9 for 11 on field goals now this year. We'll step aside, come back, and look at second half highlights a little bit later right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Undefeated Season in Review is presented by Hyundai, proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. Hunter shakes and bakes in the hole. Another cutback at the goal line. He's in. It's a Florida State touchdown. example which he's talked about bringing pressure this time he dialed up a blitz he went with his own blitz bring pressure look up inside 
And they'll try and run against it. Goes nowhere. Yeah, that's Can you go for it on fourth down from the six-yard line? Thank you. That's, that's the inexperience of the young corner. For the Orange. And on first down, it's a loss of two as Gully is swallowed up by Featherston and Goldman. 12 straight completions for Winston. They stretch it with Dalvin Cook. Look at the speed to the outside for the true freshman. Play action. Winston lobs it in the back of the end zone, walking under it for another Florida State touchdown is Bobo Wilson. Third passing touchdown of the game for Jameis Winston. And Florida State extends their lead. A.J. Long with a punt fake. Trying to avoid the rush. Throws it to the sideline. It's intercepted. And it looked like he was just trying to throw it away. And couldn't get enough on the ball to get it out of bounds. And Nate Andrews picks it off. Tenth play of the drive, first and goal. Breaks. Breaking tackles his diving pick. At the punt line is he in. It is a touchdown for Florida State. They're at their best all the time. Yeah, and they still throw up 40 points and 38 points. Oh, and, was hit, and that becomes a room service interception for Tyler Hunter. Undefeated season in review is presented by Hyundai, proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. Welcome back at intermission. Louisville on the top of the scoreboard, 7-6, to six, Coach. But you get the ball first, and this is always a point of emphasis to come out and, and get some points on the board. Try to end the half the right way and try to come out the second half and set the tone and do what you have to do. And we knew one thing. We had to get the ball in four's hands. We had to be diverse, mix it up. But, again, again, I missed block up front. I missed assignment. And we start on the 12-yard line again, something that we had been doing very well. And all of a sudden, we had a couple new guys on there, Trey being out hurt. Now, nice job here. Run pass option. Gets the ball out to Kermit. Kermit's hitting that thing. We're making 8-9 a pop. Now we get that ball to four. Run a little stretch, his own play, and he gets another four or five, get a first down. Keep him mixed up, off balance. Here we are, dumping the ball back out in the flat. Good job as a check down read. And they had a linebacker on him, and he outflanked him. We got the ball down the sideline for a nice 20-yard gain. That's the thing. Dalvin had 60 yards receiving, too. And ran a little cutback play, and this did what a phenomenal run. I mean, they, they kind of relaxed, thought they had him down. He just keeps playing hard, runs through arms, tackles it, and just finishes. I mean... You talk about a momentum changer. That that play right there to me changed everything. And that's that, that's what Dalvin does for you. All right, guys, I, I need to do something big here. I'm gonna stay within the team framework of what we're doing, but I'm gonna run hard and try to make plays. And that's Dalvin being Dalvin. 163 yards rushing on the day. 54 of them right there. I think that's the fifth run of over 50 yards for the year for him. Pretty big time. Now we got some energy, and this is Nile Lawrence getting it going right here, and Demarcus Walker. Them guys trying to get the football and. We're doing a real nice job in the run game. I mean, we're playing the run very well, good, very physical at the line of scrimmage, doing a really nice job there. But again, they picked up a third down. That was what was critical. Now they get a vapor out low on a blitz, and, get, and we, got, we had to, somebody was supposed to drop in the middle right there, and we got too wide and got leverage on a little angle route down inside, and they, they moving it. Their back's a good player. They run a little power read here. We didn't fit it to safety. We didn't get the safety fit down inside as well. Now they got a little bunch route, and then Tyler just slips, loses his footing. They got him on a little China route, and and make a play, but that, then that there, that's just frustration by Tyler, and that's usually not him, that, that's, a bad, that's a bad job by him. Now we get a little screen route, uh, we didn't get out right there, the guard got tied up inside, but Dalvin again makes five yards out of nothing. And if we got the block, we had a chance to go for a long way. That's the way screens are, they usually feast or famine. But here we get a little scramble route on third down, great job again, the scramble rules. And, I'm, and coming back to him, and there's Kermit. And you know he gets in green grass, now Kermit can finish too, he's very much like Dalvin, that's that same speed or even, maybe even greater. And uh, Big time job by Kermit. Him just keeping, look at everybody moving back to the quarterback and Everett doing a good job of keeping his poise, keeping his eyes up, continuing on the play and making plays. It's just a big, that, that's a huge play right there in the game. That put us back ahead again. Then right there, Reggie North, Reggie North, but number nine taking on that counter right there. You can't do it any better as a defensive end, wadding it up and then the backer beating the block and going. What's Jalen Ramsey? Just runs through the guy, body slams him, runs over the receiver. I mean, this guy, boy, I'm going to tell you now, you, you talk about a heck of a football player. Again, get in the rush, but then disappoint. We're in a zone. We, we, Reggie jumps an underneath drag route. He's got to be sitting right in the middle of the field. They throw it underneath route. We, we're, we're 10 yards from the first down. 
But there, Derwin James on the backside blitz, and I mean knocking the ball loose and, and as that guy making plays. And we bring in the pressure and got that ball out, and that was a huge turnover. Here we go. Nice, nice job. Negative targeting, which, which it was. Uh, back to the head of, of Travis Rudolph. Good job. Ever scanning the field, read the, the front side, came all the way back to the back side. And we get a little, you talk about set of safety up. We blocked this, but watch 77, watch 15 down there. Big time blocking by Travis Rudolph, 77, 81, Izzo. That whole left side, Mavity, the center, Hofield. Look at all these guys. I mean, they're taking these guys to the end zone. Look at this. I mean, just burying guys mm -hmm. down the field. And you give that guy space now, <laughs> and you gain on blockers. You're doing pretty good now. He's going he's gonna to make some good things happen. And right here, now this is disappointing. We got two guys miss a lane right there, our three and fours. Got kicked out, and they got a cross back over, and our one's got a knife a little better. And uh, great tackle by Roberto, game saver right there, because that could have changed the momentum coming right back. Very disappointing right there on that, and we got to do a good, better job there. They throw a post route, great job. Brutus and Elliott got back there. Elliott got back over the top, Brutus underneath, and a big, another big time, two, two big time turnovers by the defense in the second half to change momentum. And we got to be careful. We're excited to get him because okay, he got to play. We got to let their guy get up out of there. And, uh, Nice inside zone play right there by Dalvin Cook getting downhill. Again, we run now, we run a little misdirection. And again, you, you go the wrong way on him. He felt that leg start to get just a hair tight. He pulls himself right back out. It's amazing how he can do that. Then we got a nice little play action right out here to Freddie. I'm going to tell you, now, Freddie, Freddie's a good football player. We keep forgetting about him. He's always got those two, three catches a game, big block, couple runs. Big third down pickup right here. Big through Everett standing in the pocket, people in his face making a big-time curl throw right there to Travis Rudolph to keep that drive alive. We needed points. That was big time. Now we run a little power play on third and ten because we knew we had a field goal. They want to take something crazy because they were blitzing. And look look, look what happened. We pick up a third and ten on a little power play, which happens a lot. Now we get a little buzz route outside after we had a hold. And uh, we get part of it. He's got a nickel and dime and get it back. This is a third down. Double move right here by 15. And what's the throw? Right over the, right over the safety linebacker, right in the back of the end zone. We get it. No one gets it. You can just see Everett evolving more and more. And Travis ran a great route to get open for him. Big time throw and catch, and we needed that. That put us up three scores. Converting in the red zone. We went back. We had down there four times and converted three touchdowns this game. A lot better job. Great job right here with Derek Hoskins. Again, keeps getting better and better outside. And now this is the one disappointing. See, right here, Biker's got to be deeper, and Derwin's too wide. Derwin's got to be about four feet, four, four or five steps inside right there in that lane. He got too wide to the sideline. They hit it, and we got to pick it at third and 19. This is disappointing. Because then, uh, man, that, 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 that one there is a little tic-tac now. I mean, that, that one there was a little tic-tac. I, I, I can't show my ask about that one. But they got a call. That's what it is. Then here, we got the guy covered. Just misjudged the ball. Throw it, and they throw it to the corner, and we're right there with him. And just don't make a play on the ball. That's, that's disappointing by LaMarcus. It really is. And uh, that was disappointing. We're up three. Now we're back to ten minutes to go and back to a two-score game. They stop it and score. We're in a dog fight. Now, I, that's a horse collar. I mean, point blank, that's a horse collar. We missed it, and I, I can't believe they didn't, they didn't throw that, but I have no idea why. But it is. We, Dalvin making yard. This, now, you want to talk about a character drive? Again, we talked about last week about not finishing it at Wake. And one at Miami, we wanted to finish even more. We told the guys, this is your opportunity. Big third down pickup to Bobo. Now, we got to go out, just execute one play at a time, eat the clock as we drive down the field and get a score and put the game away. And this, this is where I'm really happy with this football team. Everett making great decisions, getting the ball to Kermit in space. And I'm going to tell you what, you get the ball to him in space, good things happen to you. Nine catches, 172 yards. For Career Kermit. highs, boy, getting better. And then there's Dalvin. Setting that, I mean, see how he runs with that tempo? I mean, he's, all of a sudden he's there, he's there, he's there, and then he just bursts. He was tight again, he felt it. So we put Jacquez in the game. And look at this, nice, look at that. Kermit making a guy miss. I like seeing Kermit give me a little cutback lane right here and then try to hit to the corner. But we get to the two. Uh, just a great job here. Now, nice play action by Everett. Great job by Izzo on the break. Booted around. Touchdown for our tight ends. Now, that's why I'm going to take a six, seven-minute drive. Get back up three scores. Eat the clock. Put the game away. That's a, mate a team starting to mature and understand how to play pressure football. And now we've got to take it to the first of the game. But extremely, extremely happy with our football team in that second half. And especially that last drive. There, Lorenzo Featherston. Starting to see him back in the axe. Demarcus. Those guys pushing that pocket. Getting batted balls. Here we go, Lorenzo. They ran a hey, pop a draw on third and ten. We got to squeeze that with the backer, but Roderick's making it. But hey, we're still we're eating clock. Make them go the long way. No big plays. Keep everything in front. Great job here, scrambling. Get the quarterback on the ground. Good job, Roderick. Good job, Derwin James. Guys, keeping eyes on it. Look, oh, miss sack right there, Demarcus. But again, the pressure. Watch this play by Jalen. He has his ball, and Jalen gets his hand in and just strips it out. He's so strong. Just love. 
it's important for him to make every daggone play. That was big now, not quitting and playing. Now they had a little quarterback draw. Josh Sweat quit, collapsed the pocket. Javion Elliott coming in there, doing what he does off the blitz, making plays. And here, Featherston, look at the body control by him and Sweat. Now you're talking about two guys, 6'5", six, 6'7", six, now, being able to match that guy in, in space, force him to throw the ball away on fourth down. And those guys can make a huge, huge difference. Now we just run the football, trying to run the clock out. Jock West Patrick, nice job right here. He and Sean, getting Sean McGuire and a lot of those young guys in the game. Hit a little flat right here. Frank, trying to pick up the first down. He just stepped right on the end line. And uh, we just didn't want to punt it again, but uh, we had to. Nice punt. But, again, Kaysen does a tremendous job of this, putting those balls inside the 10. And, you know, just go ahead and let that thing run just a second there, 42. But then they, they, we do a great job. There's Javion Elliott again, making a good play. And then at the end of the game, Bobby, he's a heck of a football coach, very good team. Uh, we knew it. And uh, we knew he was going to have to play well. We did in the first half. We did the second and a good win for us, and we just got to keep getting better. 41-21, the final. Coach, uh, just share a thought about uh, Javion Elliott. Who, you know, it's not very often that a walk-on gets a scholarship and then gets playing time like that. Well, and especially on a team, and I don't mean this, but that has recruited so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got some really great players out there, but this guy has earned his spot and deserves everything he's gotten. Not only the scholarship, but the, he made his way to say, Coach, I'll be on special teams. He come out and kick off the different teams and done a tremendous job. His confidence grown. All of a sudden, he starts playing nickel and some safety and corner for us, and he's doing a good job in practice. Say, you know, if we had to play a game, he can do a great job. And all of a sudden, after two more weeks, shoot, this guy can play. Yeah. And then he takes off, goes out and makes a big play in the game. I don't know if people really realize how hard it is to do what he did and the mindset you have to have because there's so many days. They don't know who I am. Dad, I don't know about tell your parents, well, the coach don't know who I am. He don't know my name. He's always yelling at me. I'm on the scout team. I'm getting beat up. I'm getting this. You know, I'm practicing by the, by the starters. Just keep playing. How hard and how much – appreciation I have for what he did and how much respect I have for what he did. Now, he's a significant player in our football team. Lots of big plays to choose from in the second half. His interception was one of them. Of yes, course, you was. have the Cook run and then the Kermit Whitfield long touchdown catch. I mean, those two big plays on offense by Kermit just uh, creating that. Then Kermit, and then uh, Dalvin on that run, which is phenomenal, set to Tony. Kermit come back and got it. Then you got Derwin James on the blitz and causing the fumble. Another freshman, he gets a turnover. Elliott Javion gets a turnover. And then we just – and we finished every drive. That was what was good and what was very encouraging about our football team. Time to turn the page, though. Georgia yes. Tech is next, and we'll <laughs> talk about the Yellow Jackets when we come back on the Jimbo Fisher Show. I'm Ryan Izzo from Vernon, New Jersey. I'm a redshirt freshman athlete tight end. Yeah, I got a pretty big family. I got two little brothers, Evan and Ethan. They're uh, 13 and 12. They both play football, basketball, both enjoy sports, and I think they're really going to enjoy this year, you know, coming down to Tallahassee, being able to see the environment, and just, you know, uh, you know living a dream with me. Uh, I definitely live with my father. You know, he's a real hardworking man. Um, you know, all the stuff he did to, you know, provide for me and my family. I think he's definitely, you know, definitely the guy I look up to. And I think one of the reasons why, you know, I work so hard every day. You know, I like to cook. I like to have real good food. I'm a real big, big eater. I love having, you know, great food. And that's kind of the family I grew up in. You know, my mom's always making big dinners, big lunches, anything, linguine, clam sauce, uh, chicken parmesan, anything like that. I guess New Jersey, you kind of think of, you know, Jersey Shore, kind of real slip bag Italian guys, but uh, up in North New Jersey where I live, there's not much to really do. You know, it's all kind of just, you know, I grew up playing basketball and football. That's all I really did every day. Just, you know, got my group of friends, played basketball, played football, came back, just enjoyed time with my family. When I first came into high school, I thought I was going to end up in college for basketball. But I ended up, you know, stopping at 6'6", six, six, didn't grow anymore, and, you know, I saw guys towering over me at 6'11", so, you know, that dream kind of squashed. And then I ended up in Tallahassee because of Coach Brewster. He uh, recruited me pretty hard during my recruiting, and I just felt like Tallahassee was home. You know, it's a, it's a lot different than Jersey, and I felt, you know, I just wanted to go out and experience and get the real college experience and play at, you know, a major university. Uh, I think definitely the speed of the game. You know, and also just, you know, the size of the defensive ends and the size of the guys out there. You know, I'm in high school blocking kids that are, you know, 210, maybe 
six foot, if that, and now you're coming up here and you're blocking 300 pound defensive ends. So, I mean, it was definitely a big transition, but you know, just hitting the weight room, you know, getting my playbook and being able to play faster and more comfortable, I think, has definitely helped me. Uh, the first time running a tunnel was Oklahoma State when we played down in Dallas Cowboys Stadium. You know, it, it was a shock for me, you know, going out of the stadium, seeing, I don't know how many, 80,000 people in the stands. You know, in high school, you play in front of maybe 5,000 people. So, I mean, it was definitely a big shock for me. I got the actually opportunity to play on special teams that year. So, you know, that was really exciting for me. But, I mean, you know, it's going out of the tunnel for the first time. It's, you know, something I'll never forget. Playing for this coaching staff, you know, they're, amazing coaching staff. I think the best in the country. You know, Coach Brew expects, you know, the best out of us every day. You run a, a, a route, you know, one yard short, you know, he gets on you. But I think that uh, from the player I was last year to this year, it was all because of him, Coach Fisher, you know, Coach Trickett helped me out if I needed something to block in. I think, you know, the best coaching staff in the country that really have improved me as a player and a person. this thing in a while, but you can't ever appreciate what this game means to a lot of people. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a guy today, guy's number retired. 
Got it right here. Four, I'm going to say Marvin Jones, number 55. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Guys, you want to learn how to play linebacker? That's just good linebacker there playing college football. And I'm going to tell you what, his number did a lot of hanging be up there. And I'm going to tell you, unfortunately, and I don't mean to rip he had a tough time. He never got to beat those Kings in that game. One time, <coughs> he won them all with that. You know what? It's this game ball right here, Marvin's for you. Ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Win a VIP experience at KnollsContest.com. Knowles back on the road this week, a 7 o'clock kick against Georgia Tech. And, Coach, that means uh, you're going to be busy preparing for that Paul Johnson offense this week. No doubt. I mean, they're going to run the option. We're going to be the cut blocks. We've got to play the fullback. We've got to play the quarterback. We've got to play the pitch. We've got to keep leverage on the ball. And then all of a sudden, keep your eyes up. And they want those real routes, those play action, and getting those guys down mm -hmm. the field is going to be very tough. Defensively, they're going to blitz you and practice you. Do a great job on defense, special teams. Paul is a great football coach. Paul is a really, really good football. A lot of respect. He's a good friend. I, I really like Paul. And he'll have those guys ready to play, and, and we're going to have our hands full. Like I said, 7 o'clock kickoff, Florida State on the road against the Yellow Jackets. We'll have uh, the highlights and a look back, of course, next week right here. But we're not finished yet. This week, some final thoughts are coming up. Stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Look Ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Win a VIP experience at KnollsContest.com. We are here with nutritionist Katie Messick. We're going to talk about the fridge. And, and Katie, when I go grocery shopping and spend lots and lots of money on groceries, I usually just come home, throw it in the fridge, and be done with it. That may not be the best idea. Yes, you kind of want to take a couple minutes for yourself to organize your fridge. Take the groceries you just purchased and put them in the fridge in an organized fashion so it's conducive to whatever goals you're trying to reach as well as to your lifestyle to make things easier along the week. What are some of the benefits of actually taking the time to organize. You want to organize in the manner of maybe food safety as well as healthier options closer to the front so you're more um, likely to purchase or pick up those those foods when you need them to snack on but also you kind of organize you have like all your milk and dairy and eggs in one area and then maybe the meat in the bottom so you know where things are and you're able to take a, an inventory when you go grocery shopping next. Does it also help with the length of time that these foods are able to stay in the fridge? A lot of times you'll sit there and you'll go through it and you'll be like, oh my goodness, this has been in here for two months. So if you're working on that, that helps with the inventory. You can rotate things out before they expire and then you save money that way too. You're not throwing things out. Where, what are some of the disadvantages you've seen that people have, you know, would people just throw it in there? What are some of the disadvantages you've seen? You're gonna pick up wrong things at the wrong, at the wrong times for whenever you want a snack. Um, so we want to kind of put those fruits and vegetables and those, those dairy products and low-fat cheeses in the front so you pick up those things when you're just trying to look for something quick. Well, let's take a look exactly what it should look like when you put your groceries away. All right, so what are some of the most important things to do when you get to your fridge with all your groceries? You want to take the time to organize it like we talked about before, but we also want to group things together. Thankfully here we have a lot more room than most people have in their homes but that's why it takes even more time to kind of sit down and organize your fridge. So we have all of our dairy products. We have, you know, cream cheese, some go-gurts, some uh, yogurts on the go, as well as some uh, string cheeses as well. So those are in the front because you can pick them up and kind of go along. Um, all of our fruits and vegetables are kind of organized together, um, as well as kind of keeping things that we can kind of already wash. We pre-wash these, we can just kind of pick them out and eat on the go. We walk over here, we have some hummus and even some um, pre-packaged applesauces. So those are kind of also in the front so you can pick the, those and go along with that too. So is this kind of the placement that you want? You want your fruits and vegetables up here, the dairy and the, the meat down? Yeah, so you wanna keep these at eye level. So if you are walking in, you open your fridge, you're like, oh, I see fruits and I see vegetables. Maybe be able to help you um, eat those a little bit when you need a snack. So we've kind of talked about the placement and everything, but what should be the staples in your fridge? Uh, we want to go a little bit around every little food group. So we have our fruits, we have our vegetables, we talked about that. 
We have our dairy, whether it's a soy, cow, or almond, something where you can kind of get those things. And then we also have our proteins. Um, and they're on the bottom floor just as they de-thaw to kind of help food safety wise. So you don't want to put them on your top shelf and have their thawing drip all the way down kind of your foods. So you said obviously this is a lot bigger of a fridge than a lot of people have. What if you have a roommate? What if you don't have a fridge quite even close to this size? What do you do? Yeah, so you want to make sure that you buy the things that are going to last a long time and maybe pre-packaged. You can also buy in bulk and what that can happen, you can utilize your freezer a little bit more with having to kind of maybe put some portions in the fridge as you go. With roommates, maybe you want to say, hey, this is my shelf, this is your shelf, and you use some of the door and I'll use the bottom half of the door. But probably buying in bulk and then kind of using the freezer too would help. Well, we just scratched the surface. If you need any more information, you can go to Seminoles.com, click on the nutrition page. That was Katie Messick. We'll see you guys next time. Some final thoughts from Coach Fisher. And Coach, your team continues to take steps forward. Yes. And, and one of the things you've started to stress to them is that, that, that maybe they haven't realized just quite how uh, good a football team they really can be. They really can be. And if they would just stay true to the process, play one play at a time, one situation, and just do your job. I know that sounds very simple, and but you know guys want to press and you know think there's more to it than that. And just go play together, play hard, do your job, be very consistent in what you do because we have some talented young football players. No question about it. FSU uh, back on the road this week, and uh, we'll have a look back at the game against Georgia Tech next week, right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Show, brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 28 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Coke Zero. You don't know zero till you've tried it. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe.